but that sounds awesome. Once you're wide open. Yeah. Is that a side exit? Yeah. Yes. And a spare V12 oh, a block. So oh, they're alley. I think they are one of the best looking cars. Heritage throttle bodies. Oh, wow. And you can see. And this is getting a V12 as well. Yeah. It's literally twice the size. Yeah, that's a wicked colour. Welcome back to the channel. I'm currently en route to go and catch up with uh, an old friend called Tom Barkley. He owns a company called Tom Barkley Racing and they specialise in old classic Jags. More specifically, old classic Jag race cars. I went over there a couple of weeks ago just to catch up. I didn't take a camera. Really good to obviously catch up, but I thought when I was there, I was like, this place is awesome and I wanted to go back with the camera to show you guys because uh, yeah I was well impressed. He's got a lot going on there, there's all sorts of toys. It's a really good setup. He's kind of he's kind of renowned in the old classic, you know, prestige FIA spec race car world and he does build good, strong, uh, powerful Jag engines, whether it's I don't know, straight sixes or V12s, he's your man. A little bit different to the usual Ford related content, but I know you guys will appreciate this. So I dug out the old flat peak cap so I'd fit in with the gentleman's, the gentleman's racing club. But yeah, he's a top bloke, very clever, and I really do think you guys are going to enjoy what I'm about to show you. So without further ado, let's uh, head on over to have a look around Tom Barkley Racing HQ. Well, I've just turned up, and I've, my eyes are caught up with this uh, crossflow block. Oh, is this for the um, Cortina? Yeah, that's it. Wicked. Cool. Right, so here we are. I've made it. This is Tom Barkley, and this is Tom Barkley Racing. And as I said, it's really impressive. When we have a look round, you'll see this has got all the toys. I was well impressed when I came over the other night, and I think you got the gist of that. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd come back with the camera and show you guys around, because there's some really interesting stuff going on. So where do you want to start? Where do we start? Let's have a look at your cars, because you've got a couple of cars here. Okay, cool, yeah, look at the coupe. This is a track car. Yes. Not road legal. Can go on the road. And Can this is going to have a V12 put yeah, in this it. This is going to go V12, so yeah. we're going to run a gnarly V12 in this one on IDFs. Yeah. So this is all FIA spec, is it? No, no, no. Right. So this is um, just the sort of club and stuff. So. Okay. But it has got cage and stuff in it. Yeah, but it's can it's up. Can I open it? Yeah, you go. Yeah. Still got the walnut dash. So you, you like me, I like the old Dymo labels on all the switches. Yeah. Hydraulic handbrake. I'm trying to convince Tom that he should take this drifting. Has it got what type of, has it got one of the weird Jag back axles with the inboard discs on this? Yeah, but on this one what we do is you can convert them to outboard brakes. Okay, is that what you've done on this then? Oh, interesting. Has it got a diff in it, like a slipper diff in it then or? Yeah, it's a Jaguar around something called a power lock. Yeah. Which is quite, you know, they're using it also. Ideal for parts. going drifting. Oh, 100% <laughs> definitely. Yeah, Tom likes to drive his Jags pretty hard because you took you took that to a hill climb event, didn't you? Was yeah, it? Yeah, Cop Hill. Yeah, and ended up just doing massive rolling burnouts. Mm -hmm. You have to send me the footage, and I'll put that in on this bit here. And this is your other one, Mark yep. One Nineteen. Seven, early boy. Look at this. Yeah. And I was appreciating the louvers last time I was here because I know how grueling putting louvers into a bonnet is. So this is this is like your bread and butter stuff. Yeah. Straight six, big tubular manifold. Yeah. What are you running on it? SUs or? Yeah. So the car's literally just come back, so you struggle to get three carburetors in there. So. What? Just because of the inner. Inner wing. So we've had yeah. all this modified. So we've had the inner wing cut away. Oh yeah, nice. We've had um, servo assembly all removed, so that's all been... Is that like on pedal box then? Uh, inside the car now was a tilt and pedal box. Oh, wicked. Oh, it was in the 70s, this thing actually, this race that's in the TT. Um, Is that a side exit? Yeah. Yes. A side exit exhaust. So what, you got, you got it out of the back of the yeah, moment? So oh. the series you have to run in now. Oh, you have to have an exhaust out of that. Oh, yeah. That's like perfect. Uh, yes. Boom tube. Yeah, 
Yeah. Would it have had like two pipes coming out of no, it? No, so that one is like a boom tube. That one's just an oval, wicked. Just an oval and just outside. <laughs> look at this. I would not expect to see a tilt and pedal box in here. Oh, look at that dash as well, all the original clocks. Hey, you've got an Elliot rev counter. Yes. Race te temps. And you got, is it original gearbox on this, but? Yeah, it's this one, the four spring, all synchro box. Nice. Your little race battery. All lightweight. The original handbrake. I love it. So yeah, Tom specialises in building, what, Jag race engines, so that's yeah. straight sixes, Spider V12 over there. So is this one that you've got to build? Or is this, this is one that's, yeah, coming for a refresh, so we've taken this out, so um, this is a 6.1 litre V12. Um, yeah, it's stripping a refresh, basically. Look at the crazy clutch on it. Is that a multi-plate clutch? Yeah, twin disc on that. Light and flywheel. And an IDF, what are these, 45? These are 44 IDFs on there. Okay. I bet that sounds awesome. Oh, yes. the, the dynos over there, we'll get to that in a minute, but yeah, I'm just trying to get my head around this linkage, first of all. What's this thing here? Is that that's the actual pedestal? So that's where the cable, cable wraps comes around. In, oh, comes okay. in this way and then sounds like there's some fuel in the bowl oh, still. Yes. Is that a pig to balance? They're not too bad to be fair. Okay. If you just crack all the linkages off and start um, it's work your way through, really straightforward. Yeah, set both banks up. You got another V12 there. Yeah, so that's out of a series three V12 V type. Yeah, is that another V12 over there? That's another, that's <laughs> another race one. And then just a pile of. Straight sixes over Straight there. Six, yes, projects and a Chevrolet V8. Oh, interesting. Is that for? We're fitting it next week. In to, uh, 1950s when I was Chevy pickup trucks. Okay. Interesting. Tom does race engines, builds them from scratch. So you'll get an old engine, you'll strip it down, acid dip it, acid dip it, yeah. and then it's machine work new rods, pistons, shells. And I'll show you, check this out for an engine assembly. But I'll come over and I said, oh, what have you been up to? He was making a shelf. And I, I said, oh, okay, I know what that means. I hadn't got a clue what he meant. But it's quite, you're quite particular, aren't you, with the way that you build. You have to be to build engines properly. And so this is what he means by making a shelf, setting up, is this one engine? No, this is, it's a few different engines. Few different engines. So this is everything, even down to the, Copper washers on all of the bolts, set, ready, and you won't start building an engine until everything's ready to rock and roll. Yeah, we like to build the heads up, everything, so when the main assembly comes, boom. You've got everything laid out over here. Yeah. This is interesting, is that a Ford part? Yeah, they are a Ford. Are they like Mondeo or? They are, something like that, yes. <laughs> Tom also does a lot of uh, EFI conversions. Yeah. And, you know, get rid of points and putting stuff onto fuel injection. So naturally, it's uh, you run Omex on a lot of your stuff. Don't Omex, you? yeah. yeah. Stuff. But it's it's really cool. When I was speaking to him last time, he was explaining about trying to hide it all. So you you do a lot of well, you do stuff with the the Gen V. Yep. Heritage. Uh, heritage, heritage. Like what we messed about with on Squizz's XR2. They look like old Webers, but they've got all the internal gubbins of a. A throttle body but you're also doing a lot of stuff where you gut out like SUs it's and turn those off. into throttle bodies which I think is really neat so visually the engine bay looks like an old classic engine bay but it's running fuel injection sick. which is pretty sick so Squiz bought one of these yeah. I know how dear they are <laughs> so that's quite an expensive little setup you got there what do you want me to move them? 
So this is original casting? No, so this is like based on one of our own okay. uh, type of casting that we get done. Yeah, a lot of the stuff we have made, so we're sort of tied up with another company up in Coventry. Yeah. Um, and we sort of design parts together, build engines together. This is one of their designs that you know we use on all of our projects. The Genby one, this is the first one we've actually used of their inlet manifolds. Okay, these are 45s, aren't they? The, yeah. But the, also, to add with these, you don't have any restrictions for Venturis and stuff. So no. That is, that is a straight through hole. It, of exactly. So the difference is people do get confused and they yeah. just want to go big with their um, throttle bodies, but you don't actually you have need to, to because right. if you get a shot down there, you'll see you've got you've got the auxiliary vent yeah. and then you've got the um, choke. choke assembly itself. Whereas down there, it's you just... Have no restrictions. So again, these are the same. So these are a 45. Here, a 45, and these are on 38mm um, chokes. Yeah. Plus, you will get the drivability. I mean, I know you can set up carbs pretty damn good, but yeah. these do top trump that Definitely. in that respect. Definitely. Again, it's a crazy linkage. Yeah. That is like something I'd engineer. You could spend days working all that out. Like the little rose joints to hold yeah. the, the bar. I suppose that's no different to how people run steering. Yeah, exactly. And stuff. It's exactly the same principle. And this is going on the knee type? Yeah. Who's in here as well? They're big, big SUs as well. Yes. They well, they're the same two, ones that you sold yeah, too. I, I bought, so back when I was trying to do a suck through supercharger conversion for the Sierra, we bought Jag two inch SUs. Is that what, that's what that's that is? Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that's a big boy. Can you boost that? Can you run boost through it? I can't see why we couldn't. Because <laughs> yeah. I know that like the Montego Maestro stuff has different yeah, the pressure. Yeah, different pressure points here. So we'd have to do something here, put a restrictor in. Because um, obviously that's how, if you've got boost coming in, It'll the first thing you do, you go, yeah. So I do, I, the SU parts, Ford boys don't really run them, but they do intrigue me. I do find, because they're very similar to all the motorbike. Yeah, that's right. Uh, variable Venturi. Yeah, slider throttles. Slider throttles, that's it, yeah. Yeah, they're a good carb. Yeah, they're very tuneable. simple. Yeah, yeah, and they're simple, they're straightforward. They just look weird, because I'm not yeah. used to them. That's that's a carb written in my, in my mind, that's what I've played around I with. prefer, I'll tell you what, the drivability on an SU yeah. over a Weber, because yeah. they, they can be, you know, trouble. You can much. feel the different jets as they come in and on. Yeah, we always go for the fifth progression. Yeah, just, just to that, make that. The transient yeah. um, fuel is so But back better. in the day, these would have just been on High performance yeah, race it. stuff, so it's flat out. Let's go that's and it, yeah, yeah, not they worry pop, about they bang, but, you know, burp and splutter. Once you're, yeah. once you're wide open, yeah, trigger, trigger wheel. wheel basically, which goes onto the. So this is a pulley aftermarket. This isn't a standard pulley. No, we have these made. Yeah, and then you press a steel. Yeah, and we also ah, grub screw it on. Grub screw it on because well, I have had issues. Yeah, that's fair enough. They're spinning, <laughs> so, spinning fast enough. They're entitled to yeah, belt and, belt and brace. Yeah, that. of course. And then we have. A, this nice. just basically goes onto the big boy bracket. Yeah, starts on the front there. Perfect. Curve down there, and you'll have that on. And that's all we do. That's basically what we did on on the XR2 engine. Yeah, we've done it before and used the flywheel and machine the trigger wheel into that. But the and Jimmy's up there. Two Bs. Predominantly race engines that you build, isn't it? Uh, we do quite a few standard road yeah. engines as well, but yeah, predominantly race stuff. So this is a straight six. This is a straight six. That's not a standard crank, is it? No, that's a, a billet crank in that one. Yeah, so nice. Uh, and H section rods. Uh, these ones are. Or oh, these are these your own? These are our own ones. Okay. So these are actually the X beam style of rodding. Are they the long one? Because you do different length rods. This don't is you? conventional length on this one. Okay. This is yeah standard length. Or oh, ARP rod bolts. ARP bolts. Ready yeah. to ready for some revs. Yeah, stuff the blocks. This is well. interesting. That's not standard, is it? No, like that's a, a fluid, harmonic. That's a harmonic damper. So that's the fluid damper that we we use on right. those. These run sleeves, don't they? Yeah. So the the jag blocks run a sleeve, and so what we do is we have the liners bored out first of all. Yeah. There's actually what not a lot of people know is there's waterways behind the liners. Ah. Um, so okay. once it comes back, we knock all the corrosion and the crud out from there. Then we send it off, it goes for acid dipping. Yeah. So it comes back fresh. Uh, then we can install the liners ourselves and then the block goes Are off. Are they like an interference them. press fit on them? Yeah, yeah. so there's a press fit on those. And then you've got more engine blocks. Yeah, so that's a, this is a V12, a bare V12 oh, block. Oh, they're alley? 
Okay. Yeah. So it's Makes sense because that would be a that would be a lump with all the yes. bits in them. What era are these then? The they sort of run from the seventies right up until. Mid Do they have variations yeah, along it's a the few way? Different variations okay. of the twelve block, but primarily they're kind of all the same. Same based Just on the same architecture. Seal. Yeah, yeah, basically, you know, they've got a different seal mod at the back. So some of the latest ones ran like a lip seal. Most of the Jag X K, well, all of the XK engines ran something called a rope seal rear main. So yeah. It's, um, and so did the V12s, but the later ones had a modern day seal like, like a Ford at the back. So what sort of power do you get out of like one of these with like carbs and stuff on? Or does it? De I know it depends on the spec. It depends what? on the spec. So this one's destined for the States, it's going out to America. Yeah. Um, this one is a full race spec, so this is going to be on 44 IDFs, yeah. stroke crank, uh, big pistons, big liners, and this will do 650 horsepower. And what era was this engine? What year was this engine? The 70s. Nice. And it will sound. Oh yes. You've got some footage of. Yeah. Can we put that in? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah, wicked. So it's a chain-driven cam. Yeah. Single cam per bank, and you got two valves per cylinder. That's light. it. Okay. Nice. And it, what are these? Water. Yeah, water jackets they have them. Is this just for inspection or do you have So no, you'll have your feeds that come out, so that's up there. Okay. Sits on there. So you, you see this, you know this day like you deal with this day in, day out, but this yeah. is so foreign to me. But it's so similar to other things that I've I've looked at. Yeah. Way. They're so basic as you yeah. said, they're like a straightforward. The other thing I like about the old Jag engine, you haven't got one with a head on, but they look like big aero engines, is yeah. what I I sort of Yeah. So is that a head under there? Yeah, there you go. What sort of power can you get out of a six cylinder on just carbs? It really depends on the capacity. Generally, yeah. around 330 horsepower, yeah. 330 to 350, something like that. It's something like a, a Mark I Jag. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, Ripper, that's yeah. on cross by tires. Oh, yes. That's <laughs> plenty of power. Yeah. yeah, it's got a really nice assembly area. And you've got your workshop, machine yeah. shop through there. So you've got like the lathe, press, welding table, TIG welder. Yeah, I was like a kid in a candy shop when I come around here last time. I was like, oh, so much to look at. Storage, you've got more storage up on the mezzanine, which is all bits and bobs that you sell through the through the shop. And then you've got, is that an E-Type under there? What year is that? 60... 62, I believe. Oh, right. Same year as the Anglia. Can we have a look at that? Yeah. Proper car. So this is a customer's car? Yes. And what's this in for? Is this in for? So this is being converted to fuel injection. Okay. Um, but this is the one we're going to retro mod it and um, keep the SUs in place. Yeah. And hide the injectors just so it looks. Yeah. Well, so a quick glance, unless you really start digging deep, you're not going to know that it's running on uh, EFI. I love the three wipers on them. Yeah. So you've got to run a lift pump in the tank. So probably on this, what I'm going to do is just do it so it's all integral in the tank. Yeah. So if we just do it that way. Um, put something like a Walbro pump in the back there. I've done it before, so we can do that. Yeah. Put the return line on the back there as well. Hide the ECU somewhere. Hide the ECU in the foot. Do a nice and neat loom. Because you build it. all the looms yourself, yeah, don't you? Yeah, looms, everything. And then gut the carbs out. Are you going to hide injectors in there somewhere? Injectors yeah. Uh, they're a gorgeous car. I think they are one of the best looking cars ever. Yeah, see this is all, it's ne never on a cable, is it? On these, they're all like, on, no, a, on a push, push rod push sort system. of system. That's what I like about, I mean, they, they are basic, but the complexity just to get to this, like, so the pedal, what, pushes on? Yeah, so the throttle pedal, I'll operate Yeah, operate it. Oh. You'll be able to see how it works. Yeah, so it's got a pivot point there, one, two, three, and then it runs across all of the carbs there. Are these a pig to balance, or? No, they're really, again, really straightforward. Very, very simple. Yeah, that's proper. Would you keep the uh, the coil just for well, we, originality, we, we, so we people could. wouldn't wouldn't guess it? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the side note, we've, we've actually issued a spark through a distributor. Okay. Um, or, or run for a, a coil, coil, coil pack. Coil, yeah. Because you could mount the coil pack in the. Well, you tuck it underneath. So what I normally do is tuck it underneath the inlet manifold, just run the. All the, the HD leads up, so it wouldn't look any different from that. That's it. Would you blank off the dizzy then usually? Like the yes, dizzy drive. Yeah.
Cigars. Cigars. This thing's pretty insane. This is this is a bit of me. So you're building this pretty much scratch. Yeah, from scratch. Build, yeah. Can we have a look at this one? Certainly. And this is getting a V12 as well. Yeah. Is that going to be on throttle bodies or is it going to be by the like Weber's? Uh, probably on, this will be on ITV. So yeah. yeah. So this is all pretty much all fiberglass front front. Yeah, front. front so wings. You've done the doors. Body. You moulded them or did yeah, you get the them? Doors molded. Yeah. And it's tube to a certain extent tube front end. Mm. So you've got loads of space for big. Big tubular manifolds and then a bit of a spider web roll cage in there. Gussets. Yeah, this is cool. Did you mould these or did you just mould the doors? Just the doors. Yeah. So this is it's actually a kit you can get from a company called Fiber Sport. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Still yeah. That. The wings were run for the bonnet we had moulded. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the doors were. Release. Do that. If you want to work on the car. Are you going to go polycarb windows in it or keep them yeah. right down? You could use these for like ducts for the yeah, that's brakes. Yeah, used them for originally and stuff. So this is like an air jacks. Yeah, so like a modern, you know, old school, old school, but with a modern twist, basically. Yeah. I like it. Big tunnel. Yeah. So will this have a standard-ish gearbox in it? No, you know? this is a Tremec. There we go. Yeah, that looks really cool, really aggressive. Yeah, you can use those for brake cooling That's as well. Yeah. Every time I come down here, I just get to pull the, <laughs> the covers up. Yeah, Spend half an hour putting it all back together. Yeah, that's a wicked colour. Yeah. So what's the plan with this? Is this just another scratch built race car that you've got to do? Yeah, so this one has got a bit of history to it. So I did race back in the day. Oh really? Um, so it's got some pedigree to it. Yeah, it's got a bit of pedigree. So this one is yeah, destined to race at Goodwood. And this is this FIA? This one will have to be, yeah, yeah, okay. FIA, this one. Yeah, because it's quite strict rule book on what you can and can't do, isn't it, in terms of yeah, very ticking the boxes. Much stand, like, kind of like a right? Yeah. Oh, this colour's amazing. So would you say your bread and butter stuff is the E-type stuff or is it any Jag? I'd say primarily E-types. E-types, okay. Primarily E-types. So have you got the engine for this one then? Not yet, no. Uh, to be built. To be built. On, the, on the list. <laughs> I like the little dolly set up. Is that, is that your uh, doing? Yeah. You've done the same on the front? It's front on a bread. I'd just have it on bread trolleys if that was me. Yeah, oh wow, the front's all. That's not how they are, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shows how much I know. So you don't just do jags. <laughs> he also does. Minis. So what's this in for? EFI, isn't it again? Yes, yeah, so this is on a fuel injection already. Okay. Mini shoes. Um, so this is on the heritage throttle bodies. Oh wow. Engine you see. Is this a seven port engine? Then? Yeah, this is an Arden seven port um, head and stuff on this one. That's nice. Still don't know how they get it all crammed in there. Nice. Did you start watching that Project Binky? I'll tell you, linked it. Yeah, yeah. That it gets, it just keeps on getting better. Oh. And you think that's compact, and then they manage to get all the four-wheel drive stuff in there. It's a clever bloke. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the world's smallest oil cooler. Yeah, I bet this is good fun. Is this on like a straight cut gearbox? Or is it? Straight cut. Yeah, very good. And is it on the twelves or tens? Yes. Let's have a look. Yeah. Little ten-inch wheels, like little. Go kart wheels. This is a race car, isn't it? You've raced this It has raced in here, it's came from Canada, I believe. Okay. Um, so has, this one's got a bit of history, but yeah, the car used on the road. Just a, just a, just a weekend a, blast. Just a hack, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now he's got the low backs. That's a good way of doing the harnesses. I might take note of that. The wireless on it. I even like the old um, oil warning light, and is that a shift light? 
Looks like something off of a back of a caravan. And you've got a rolling road? Yes. Which is handy to know. Do you do Mark 1 Fiestas by any chance? Of course we do. So do you use this for setting up and tuning? Yeah, so we do, we use an engine dyno, so any, every engine we build goes on the engine dyno and tests the But tune. you have just bought an engine dyno? We've just bought an engine dyno, yes. Yes, interesting, very interesting. Yeah, so um, the engines get built run in because you've even got an engine yeah so whenever we do an engine we build the engine we use this test it fire it up yeah get it up to temperature get it up to temperature check, check it all parts, over whatever you know yeah get it so it's and then you can go. get it on the engine dyno engine dyno just the key straight away at the start yeah. um run it in power test it tune it and then we're good to go um, obviously then you do get differences you know oh yeah yeah this the, even even from what i understand my limited understanding you have, can have Driving on the road is different, even to the rolling road. It will load it up differently. That's it. I mean, in your, I mean, your, yeah. In your opinion, what's the best way of tuning an engine? On the road. 100%. On the road. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so, so I, I know Tom from years back when he used to mess around. He had a Gordini headed yeah. Clio. Yes. With a, uh, so, the way I know Tom, he was the guy who was messing around with Maestro Montego turbo carbs, yeah. and that's why we ended up putting an SU on Caleb's yeah. red no, Fiesta. No, So he was the inspiration for that. Um, and also you knew a lot about the Renault 5 turbo carb, so we ended up putting on Zach's CVH. So that's how I know Tom. And uh, yeah, you still got the Clio somewhere, haven't you? It's buried away. We'll have to dig that out, because you put the engine in the back. That's it. And it had, yeah, from memory, it's a 1400. That's it. C1J block. With, with a Gordini, Gordini head, head on it. But it's all fuel injected as well, isn't it? You had it, I'm sure you had uh, yeah, it. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, 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 so we'll have to dig that out and have a look at that because and finish it oh, yeah. and get it on a dyno. Yeah, you know. And it. then go and map it on the road. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jokes. Where are you gonna put the engine dyno? Are you gonna put it in here, I take it? Yeah, so we're gonna put it in here, so probably down it's on the ends so there so where the roof is to move the stuff there. Yeah. And it, it's it's in a cell and everything, so weighted. Um, put it over there. Keep everything in house. Yeah man, that's what you want. So here you can see this is so they make these smaller and then pull them out like machine right, them out if you look we can see so these two basically started off for the original stroke yes yeah. this, this is a 106 millimeter stroke yeah same this and you can see where the crankshaft sludge bungs are and you see this is um they don't move that though do they yeah well they cut that no no, no. look if you look at it it's called i think i believe it's called submersion welding or submersion arc welding so they just weld it Keep welding and welding and welding. Ah, oh, so right, so the original that piece is still in there. Yes. But then they add to the outside. That's it, and then you grind. And then off. and then you you have it on the crazy uh, grinding wheels where they then reprofile that further out. That's it. That's it. So that it's gone basically from that stroke from 106, and this is 125 yeah, there now on the stroke. And it what's with all of the? Is that just balancing? Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, just shaving bits just out shaving of it. Because I've seen where they drill into the counterweights and stuff to balance it. But this is all knife edge as well. Is that standard? That's standard on these, yeah. And then this is like a proper race. So, yeah, that's a, a 3.8. <laughs> this is a fully counterweighted. So you see you've got the counterweights on, on it. each one, yeah. On each one compared to the Jags where they're not fully counterweighted, the standard cranks. Um, but there's quite, as you can imagine, it's, oh, billet cranks. They're all a lot heavier yeah. than a standard crank. But they're stronger they to strong. take the revs that's and it. the forces. That's it. Or do you rev like a, a six cylinder two? It can't be that high, or is that top secret? Um, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ask all the questions and put them on the spot. It depends, um, you know, who you are and stuff, but yeah. generally they're a Jaguar about six two. They don't make any more power, and then you're in the realms of how long, you know, you yeah, want long it to last. Yeah, yeah, that's right, you want it to last. Yeah. So. They're monsters though, they're just, it's just, from what I'm used to, everything's just scaled up. Like the engine's obviously got 
couple more cylinders, but everything's just... Yeah, get, grab, a, grab the crossbow crank and stand it next to it. This is big boy stuff. It's literally twice the size and a bit. So yeah, that is Tom Barkley Racing. Thanks for having me. Thanks for a cup of tea. Uh, I don't know what to say really, what do I say? You'll be back soon. I, yeah, I will be back soon, definitely. Yeah, we need to, I think, get the Fiesta on the dyno. I want to see the engine dyno when that's up and running, because I'll be very interested. As I said, I'm, I'm blown away by this setup and some of the race cars that he's obviously working on. Thanks for your time, Tom. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to check out his website. I'll put a link down below if you want to buy any Gucci Jaguar parts. He's a guy. And if you need a race engine, you can contact him through the website. And he's got an Instagram, although we need to put some content on that. So that's the next project. You can hear the rain, so I think it's about time to uh, skedaddle. Right, so there you have it. That's Tom Barkley Racing. As I said, he's a top bloke, very knowledgeable, very helpful, uh, and I think you'll agree his setup's pretty impressive. I hope you guys enjoyed the little tour and a look round. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be seeing a little bit more of him in the next year or so as he uh, gets the engine dyno. Uh, I want to try and make use of his rolling road with the Fiesta. I think that was a worthwhile trip. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think. Obviously, it's a little bit off topic what we usually do with the Ford stuff, but as I said, this channel's, I don't want it to just be about Fords. I always have interest in anything that's cool interesting classic cars especially stuff from the 60s i love e-types uh, i love mark ii mark one jags and i just enjoy looking at the engineering and the the kind of stuff that he gets involved with i could stay there and chat for him for hours but i actually got to make my way over to hatfield and pick up a new project so um yeah let's let's hit the road and go and have a look right so back from hatfield i picked this little beauty up 51 pounds off of ebay it's got some scuffs and marks but this is going to be perfect for the little girl come christmas day missing a little trim piece there uh it's got a little dink on the front but i reckon i can repaint the repaint the silver on it anything is iron it up next to this i reckon i can get this running gear mounted inside one of these as i said that's a project for another day yeah, i've got this crazy cart here that i really want to put the running gear inside this beer crate because these are taking up far too much space in the garage so um yeah that's another project for another day but as for the fiesta still waiting on the drive shafts to be made from elite yeah i've basically started pulling the exhaust and the turbos off because uh, me and zach have got an idea on redoing a bit of the exhaust manifold and i'm going to be sending the exhaust downpipe turbo uh, hot side to housings off to bnb engineering and they're going to be ceramic coating it all in a popping shade of white um, and that will help with my underbonnet temps currently on axle stands but as i said when the drive shafts get back that'll be um throw it all back together sort out the vents in the back windows whilst i remember i've managed to set up a new dropship uh, supplier for fpe merch so there's a new link down a, a t-mill link in the description below so go and check that out if you want some new fpe merch yeah that's pretty much it for this video i hope you enjoyed it until next time i'll catch up with you guys later take it easy oh.